Okay, so continuing on with the study guide, we're going to talk about chapter 6 now, the algebra chapter, probably one of your longer chapters that you did in this uh, course. Uh, number 20, we'll start with number 20, says to evaluate an expression for x is 1 and y is negative 2. So we have this algebraic expression given, given on your study guide, and we're asked to fill in x is 1, y is negative 2 carefully, and then use your order of operations. So we'll have 1 squared, and for y, we'll have negative 2 cubed. It's always best to fill in your values with parentheses around them. All right, order of operations says that you should always do any operations that are within the parentheses first. So there's not really anything to do inside that parentheses, so we go on to step 2. Step 2 is doing exponents or radicals. So we have those. 1 squared is 1. That just means 1 times 1, so that's still 1. Negative 2 cubed means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So that is still a negative, negative 8, and then minus 12. Our next step would be do the multiplication. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. You know when the signs are different with multiplication, it's negative. If the signs are different, it's negative. So then we have a 3 plus a negative 40 and a minus 12. Again, all of this really can be done on your calculator, but I'll like for you to see how it's done by hand as well. Uh, 3 and a negative 40, we could do those two um, from left to right. 3 and a negative 40 would be negative 37. We would subtract and use the sign of the larger. And then minus 12. If you had a negative 37 and you took 12 more from it, you'd be even further in the hole at negative 49. So total answer for that is negative 49. Next question, number 21. Uh, we mentioned this earlier in chapter 1. It is a proportion, a fraction equal to a fraction. Anytime you have that set up, that's called a proportion. And the cross products have to be equal. So we can say 7 times x plus 4 has to equal 9 times x minus 2. And you could have had either one of those first. It doesn't matter which way you multiply first. But the cross products are equal. Um, okay, so now we've moved into solving equations. First step in solving an equation then is to distribute. Distribute the 9. So we're distributing the multiplication, by the way. This 9 is multiplied by whatever is in that parentheses, what it's telling you. That's what distributing is, is handing out the multiplication. 9 times x, 9 times negative 2. Then the next step is you always want to simplify each side down as much as possible. If there's any operations you can perform on either side, you do that and you add or subtracting. Uh, but we, we do not have like terms here, so we can't do anything else to the left or right side. So next step is you want to get your variables to one side and your numbers to the other side. You've got variables on each side here, 7x and a 9x. You're going to need to get those together. It doesn't matter which side you choose. Uh, it will come out the same in the end. Uh, I usually try to choose the side that keeps my variable positive, but you don't have to. I would prefer to move the 7x over to the right side, so I want to completely erase it from the left side. The way I do that, since it's positive, is I subtract the entire 7x. That cancels that out of the left side. Then to keep the balance, I subtract it from the right side. So now I have 28. 9x and minus 7x is 2x and a minus 18. Okay, since I brought the variable to the right side, I would like any constants, any numbers to be on the other side. So the minus 18, I get plus 18 to cancel that off of the right, then keep the balance, plus 18 on the left. 28 and 18, let's see, that's 46. Run into my next problem. Uh, then the last step in, al in solving an algebraic equation is you'll have something multiplied maybe onto your variable. So just want the 2 to disappear. I want x to stay. So I divide out the 2. 2 divided by 2 makes a 1x or just x. Then do the same thing on this side. Divide by 2. And now we've got it. x is alone equal to 46 divided by 2, which is 23. So you should be able to verify back in the original problem plug in 23 for x, it should make those two sides equivalent. Alright, next problem, number 22, another uh, equation to solve. We distribute the 4, that makes 4x plus 8. Distribute 4 on the right, 
4x plus 20a. Now this is going to be a special case of an equation. If you think about it, this question is saying 4 times what number plus 8 will be equivalent to 4 times that same number we're solving for x, that same x with a 28 added. And so that's not going to be possible. I can kind of foresee that. But if I continue on with the steps as I did in the last problem, I would want to get these x's together. So when I bring 4x over by minusing 4x from this side, then minus 4x to keep the balance, I wind up with no variables. The variables completely cancel out. So all I have left is 8 equals 28. This nonsense equation uh, It's not a true statement. Uh, it has no variable for me to solve for, so something's wrong here. And this is because there was no solution to this equation. It was a contradiction from the beginning. So no solution. Okay, uh, moving on. Number 23, another equation solving problem. Distributing the 9 makes 27x and 81. Now, caution you on this right side. The, not, the 14 is not to be distributed. It's not directly in front of or multiplied onto this parenthesis. It's an added 14. It's actually a positive 14 because you always look in front of something for its sign. That's, that's not distributing. What is to be distributed is this understood negative 1. So we break the 14 down just as an extra constant and then distribute the negative 1. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Okay, the next step is, like I said before, you always want to condense down each side if possible, if there's any like terms. So on this right side, there's a positive 14, remember, in front. Sometimes students look behind, it's not negative, it's in front of it. It's a positive 14 and a negative 3. So that will combine to be 11 with minus 1x. And then on the left side, 27x and 81, just bringing that down. Okay, the next step is to get the variables to one side. I've got a 27x on the left and a negative 1 on the right, so I need the x's to find one side to go to, so I'm going to come over to the left side with my variables. To get rid of the negative 1x, I could add 1x to cancel that out, keep the balance to add 1x to the other side. Uh, so what we would have is 28x's, 81, and 11 left. So it can sit down a little bit each step. Now I want the numbers to be on the same side. So if the variable's on the left, I want the numbers over to the right. So to get rid of 81, I could do the opposite of plus 81, which is minus 81. Then keep the balance, minus 81 from the other side. So 28 x's left, that's all that's left over here. And then 11 and minus 81 uh, should be negative 70. Next step, divide out that multiplier on the x. Remember the last step, you don't want the whole thing to disappear. You only want the 28. You want to leave the x. So divide out the 28. 28 divided by 28 is 1 or 1x. One Do the same thing to this side. Divide by 28. Notice it didn't come out just perfectly, so let's look at our directions and see how it was to be stated. Negative 70 over 28. We need to reduce that down and follow the directions given which say what type as an integer or a fraction. So we need to, if it doesn't come out even, we need to reduce it as a fraction. So I believe 7 goes into both of these numbers. 7 into 70 will be 10. It's still negative. And 70 into 28 was 4. Evidently, it reduces even more than, than I thought. I noticed both of those divided by 7. But 10 and 4 will also reduce. You can half each one of those numbers and reduce it all the way down to negative 5 over 2. So reduce to lowest terms uh, if that's what the directions ask. Okay, number 24. So the next problem, we're going to change gears a little bit and ask you to solve this for y. Now notice we have x and a y in this problem. So it's not like the one we just did. If there's only one variable in a problem, you can solve this in one equation. There's some way to follow through the distributing, combining, you can reduce it down. But if you have two variables and only one equation, you probably not going to be able to solve it. You can just solve it in terms of the variable, uh, rearrange it in terms of y, but you won't be able to get like an answer negative 5 halves to it. So this is really a rearranging thing. Solve in terms of y. So I want y on the left, everything else on the right. 
So to get the 8x over to the other side, this positive 8x on minus 8x cancels it from the left, minus 8x to keep the balance on the right. That leaves a negative 8y. And then on this side, we have a positive 1 and a minus 8x. And you can put those in either order. Negative 8x and positive 1, either way it's okay. Then divide by negative 8. You know, you do divide by the exact same sign because you want negative 8 divided by negative 8 to be a positive 1y. So when you do this dividing step, you're dividing by the same sign. So that makes positive 1y, or just y equals, do the same thing over here, divide out the negative 8. And notice that, let's see what, which way they want the answer expressed. It's not coming out even here. 1 divided by negative 8 is a fraction. Okay, so we are going to leave that fractional part as 1 over negative 8 or negative 1 8. And because both of these are divided by negative 8, right? There's two pieces, so both of these are divided by negative 8. 1 over negative 8, negative 1 8. And negative 8 divided by negative 8 cancels and just leaves that x. So plus x. And that answer is okay, but normally we see the x in front, so I'll probably turn those around and say the positive x and the minus 1a in that order. Okay, number 25 is uh, taking words and changing it into an algebraic statement. So it says solve this written out problem 17 more than 3 times a number. 17 more than means plus, 3 times a number means we don't know it, it's a variable, x is the same as, that's your equal sign, four less than, I want to talk to you about that. When it uses that phrase, four less than, it means four is subtracted from something. So it kind of throws it to the back, actually. So watch out for that. If I put four minus, don't mess the whole problem. Four less than means the four is coming from or it's in the back of something. Four less than, 13 times the number. So there's a 13 times the number and then subtracting four. What is the number? So we get our problem written up and then we follow our solving equation steps. We need variables on the same side. I'm going to take the 3x, move it over. So that gives me 17 equals 10x minus 4, plus 4 to each side. To cancel that out, I mean, my goal is to get x alone, so I've got 10x equals 21. Divide out 10. To leave x solve for x equals 21 tenths. And always look to see if it will reduce or if it's following the pattern that Math Excel asks the answer to be left. Um, it doesn't, it says, what is the number? Uh, so 21 tenths should, should assume that. Okay, so I'll cut that off there for chapter 6.